All right. Thank you so much for patiently waiting. I said I apologize for running a little bit late because I do not like to run late. But uh, I, I can't believe there's this many people interested in plantar fasciitis. They're going to enjoy this talk. <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> now we're going to cover the thyroid today. We've got lots to cover. Now, uh, come on, Mary. have a seat. Yes, I know I'm starting early. Uh, I'm starting early because I'm going to go through a couple of things. So if people straggle in, they're not going to miss the, the, uh, the content of the seminar and stuff. Now, the nice part is, as you can see, I'm hooked up to a mic. We got cameras all over. The nice part is this, for example, is none of this will be on our website and stuff. It'll eventually be on our website, but also, too, uh, Casey, our, our video guy, will actually put it, and you can get it emailed to you that way. So you can actually have it in HD recording that way, so it's kind of nice. So uh, in, if you kind of see, we didn't hand out many notes besides uh, uh, one flyer here, okay? Um, as you check in your name there, you'll actually get all the uh, slides emailed to you. So don't viciously write everything down, okay? See, because why? Because I want you to stay focused on what we're going to cover today. Because if you stay focused on what we're going to cover, then what happens, you won't miss anything. Because sometimes when you're writing stuff down, what happens? You're like, you forget what I just said two minutes ago, okay? So I'm going to hand you the slide. So stay engaged during the whole time because we're going to cover a lot of material. Now, the one thing is this, is we're going to cover what I call the untold story because it's very controversial. I'm going to show you the nice, beautiful, wonderful um, letters I get from medical doctors all the time when I'm teaching this. <laughs> and you know what I mean by nice, wonderful letters? Do you think they're really nice about it? No, but I'm going to show you several cases, several people coming in on a regular basis that suffer from these things massively. So, but sometimes people say, ah, oh, well, that Dr. Flynn, he's just a hippie, you know, person that eats greens all day. You know, and I'll tell people really honestly, I hate lettuce. I hate vegetables. And people say, well, wait, Dad, the doc, that's one of your professions. I said, yeah, that's fine, but I just don't like it. So I kind of found a neat little picture that I thought that described me the best, okay? And that's this. <laughs> we have an orange kitty that looks just like this. And it's like, isn't that funny? When we kind of, you know, our diet's that way. But what I want to show you guys tonight is very simple. Is we're going to have a lot of fun, okay? And we're going to teach you some very neat stuff. Now, like I said, it's called the untold story for this main reason. I guarantee you that you haven't heard this stuff before. But there, here's, there is a, one mantra I do have, though, okay? Because what's going to happen is I've heard this already from a lot of patients that the doctor said. They said, well, that's Dr. Flynn's, Flynn's opinion. That's his stuff. Well, for some of you guys that know me, I'm very big on research. So when anybody ever says something saying that's Dr. Flynn's or this ain't true, what's my mantra? Doc, where'd you read that? Can I have a copy? You follow me on that? So I'm going to give you guys all your copies. That's why, for example, I'm going to give you all of the slides. Because here's the biggest thing. This is the biggest part about it is confusion. Think about it. Most people are confused about what's going on. Why? Well, if you remember from the first slide, let me ask you a question. Have you ever had your thyroid tested or know somebody has or any blood test in general and tell you that you're normal? And you're going, really? I feel like crap. I don't have energy. I can't lose weight. I go all those things and you're telling me that, oh, my blood tests are normal. Now, how's that possible? They, hey, here, I'm not saying they're not smart. I'm not saying that they don't know what they're doing. It's just that we have a wrong concept of what they do. And I'm going to show you what they test for. The biggest thing is, and I'm going to make this statement right now, they don't know how to properly test you. You say, ooh, doc, that's kind of arrogant. No, it's not. See, the thing is this. When they don't know how to properly test you, they don't know what they're looking for. And you say, well, why? Because your education is different. So I'm going to go through a lot of that in detail, and we're going to get rid of this confusion. The reason why is here's what happens. <laughs> Remember I tell you about those nice letters? Let me read you one, okay? Um, this came in on a lady that actually came for me from Upper Michigan. She says, I'm the primary care physician for Mrs. Fult. So what was she saying to me? I'm her doctor, not you. And I don't mean this, now, here, let me say this very nicely. It's, it's going to sound like some arrogant statements, but it's not about me, okay? But here's what happens. Why is she seeking my care out when she, you're her doctor? Do you see what I'm saying? If, she, if you're her doctor and you want to tell it to me, then why is she sick looking for me? You know what I'm saying? It's just, it doesn't make any sense, okay? Now, recently, I have received a fax request. Here's the best part. When I actually find out what's going on, and some of you guys are patients here, Guess what? Labs can be done where? Anywhere. We all use the same labs. I don't care if you go to Aurora, Purveya, uh, here, anywhere else. Guess what happens? They're all the same labs. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you get them done. So I don't care. So I say, hey, go back to your doctor and get these requests done. So then she says, in order of blood work from her, most related to, most related to her thyroid. What, what do you think he meant by that? See, she had a thyroid problem, but there's other factors that affect it. And that's the key. Do you follow me on that? So she's, he's like, why the heck are you relating this when I diagnosed her with a thyroid problem? Because there's contributing factors. Now, 
I also saw her in the, in the follow-up discussion. She relayed to me that you performed an x-ray, and guess what? It sold calcifications. We'll get into that later. But here's one thing. Also, her thyroid function was adequately tested with reliable tests through respectable laboratories. Yeah. <laughs> they just didn't test all the stuff, okay? In May 2006 and also, or in 2010 and also 2006, and I can assure you her thyroid function is complete within normal limits, yet she, was, she was, has a hard time losing weight. She was fatigued. She had cold hands and feet. Do you follow me? I mean, here, most of you guys are here because you probably have something like this going on. And so when you go on the internet and you Google thyroid problems, what do you have? All those major symptoms, okay? And so they go, what do we do? And they come back and you say, well, my thyroid's normal. And they're like, really? Okay. So here's what he said. I have elected not to order the test requested. Not to, at, here, here's great. At several hundred dollars expense as they would not, they would provide no significant clinical value for her care. Now, what did they mean by that? He meant that if I did that blood work on her, guess what happens? I can't drug her, one of those levels. There's, there's, a, there's a really difficult thing that people have a hard time understanding. If they can't drug it, they won't test it. Does that make sense? It's a very bold statement. If they can't drug it, they won't test it. That's why you'll find out most of these labs I'm gonna give you, they're not druggable. So therefore, what are you gonna do for it? How many guys here are Facebook friends of mine? And you see all the stuff I post. See what I'm saying? And it's like, I do you always love this? I always love this. I posted a thyroid one the other day, just kind of prepping for a seminar because she just came in, 26-year-old woman that was just horribly sick. And, the, and their doctor said it was normal, 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 normal. And guess what? It came back what? Abnormal. Okay. And then the funny part was where, where she was kind of going through all the things that were going on. And I said, listen, we're going to go through some different steps. And so this, the, on Facebook, what these people put? Doc, what'd you do for her? Well, do you think all of us are saying, please look at the woman or the guy next to you. <laughs> don't look that way if there's no one there, okay? <laughs> well, here's the thing about is this. Do you think you're all the same inside? So can I give you all the same, quote, treatments? No, and that's where it's very different, and that's where some of the confusion comes up. So then you have people like this. Oh, my goodness. Giving you, here is your Dr. Oz thyroid cure. I kind of want to throw up when I see this stuff. You know what I'm saying? I do. Or the other day, it's kind of funny. Um, for you guys that saw on Facebook, friends, so my, I'm sitting reading, because anytime I see something, I read it like crazy. I just am an avid reader. And all of a sudden, I was going through the grocery store at Woodman's, and they had Woman's World there. And they had thyroid detox. So I'm sitting there reading it, and my wife takes a picture of me and actually posts it on Facebook. I'm going, she's like, look at my husband. <laughs> and, but the key was, it was about thyroid. Now, the one thing is this, because everybody has a what? Everybody has your cure and your what you should do. And then when you look at the whole thing, Dr. Oz tells everybody what they should do. Well, let me ask you a question. Is everybody the same? No. You see, they're thinking. Their thinking is totally wrong. You say, oh, doc, that's pretty arrogant. No, it's not. Because why? Even Dr. Oz says, listen, this is true. 27 million women struggle from a low thyroid that they know of. 27. There's 350 million. That's almost 10%. Now, here, what is the best option to have for them? Honestly, what is the best option to have? Lever thyroxin, thin thyroid armor, and if you're lucky, maybe cytomel. Okay, which one do you guys want? And how long do you want to take it for? Because they'll tell you I've taken it for how long? Forever. Okay, and I'm like, that's just not the right thinking. We got to think totally different when this comes to that. So here's the, here's the bad part. So this is most of you guys right here. You're going, you read a little something, you go this way, you read a little something, you go this way, and you do this, and you kind of go this way, and then guess what happens? But you really have nobody creating yourself a roadmap for each individual person. Because let's say I tested her, and I tested her, and I tested her, and even their values were actually the same. Do you think I could treat them the same? Let me ask you a question. You think this young lady and this young lady go through the same stresses per day? So you think her hormones are the same? Now, do your stress hormones have an effect on your thyroid? Okay, we're going to find out. Do you follow me? So it's all very different. So that's why, for example, to understand the thyroid or understand all of healthcare, you have to understand one thing. Guys, ready? This is monumental right here. You understand this next picture. You understand this, a plant. They say, whoa, wait, that doesn't make any sense. Really? So let's say that this plant started to wilt, okay? What is your first thought process if that plant is wilting? Why didn't you think it needed levothyroxine or synthroid? Do you see how stupid that sounds? You can laugh, okay? Yeah, but see, see when we look at a, per, uh, at a plant, we go, wait, but what happens if we give it water and now it doesn't get better? Is water not good for plants? No, water needs, a plant needs water. But then you think what? It needs what? sunlight. But what happens if that didn't work? Maybe somebody's, you know, putting cat litter in the, in, or the cat's pooping in the, in the, the, uh, the tub there. 
okay? My point is this. You never look at a plant and say, listen, it needs a drug or we got to cut off some leaves. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't even make sense. We treat our plants better than we treat ourselves. When we look at, so when I look at a woman or a guy who's rotting, is wilting, our question shouldn't be what drug or surgery does he need? But that's our basic health care. And if we see a low thyroid or something going on, so even if they find low thyroid, they don't ask what the thyroid needs. They ask what? What can I do to alter it? It's like putting green paint on the wilted leaf, okay? And so what happens? We have people run around all painted up and sick as a dog, okay? So now, so who am I? This is kind of nice. Uh, actually, right now, all over Wisconsin right now in our clinics, so guess what? The wellness ways are actually doing their thyroid talk. Uh, we, we have multiple places all over and more growing. That's the nice part. Um, this is kind of my background. Like I said, my background is nutrition. I'm also a chiropractor. I'm also a naturopathic doctor. So I have kind of multiple degrees. And so when I started here back in 2000, I started with all my degrees kind of taking a very unique perspective at it. And for years, as you can see, that last one's back from 2010. For years, I've been doing this. And then what happened just over the last couple of years, I've started to actually become more public with it because I got sick of everybody coming in with massive problems and 27 million women doing thyroid medications that way. And it's getting worse and worse and worse, okay? Um, so I started to actually become more public and actually, guess what? I've actually been on a couple international radio shows. Um, actually, one of... Uh, uh, a very, very nice medical doctor. Her name is Dr. Shelby Lane. She's had me on her radio show a couple times where they actually listen to millions of listeners every single day. Um, I consult for two psychiatric hospitals. Now imagine that. Two things I deal with mainly all day long are psychiatric problems and female hormones problems. They kind of go together. <laughs> okay? I'm going to show you that tonight. <laughs> That's why it's kind of funny. That's the main thing I deal with all day long. And now it's kind of funny. I have all sisters. And I have all daughters. God played a kind of a funny little one for me. You know what I'm saying? He kind of guided me that path. So we're going to cover a lot of material. Now, the one thing is I'm going to speak kind of fast, okay? Because I got about four hours material that I'm going to give you over the next hour and 15 minutes. But I promise you that when you leave here tonight, you're going to think differently about thyroid. And that's all I ask, honestly. Now, you're going to have a great concept on how to take care of it and what to do. Absolutely, okay? You say, well, Doc, you're going to speak to all of us. How are we going to figure out individually? That's the cool part. I'm going to show you tonight, okay? So are we ready? So here's our goals. Here's, our main goal is we got to think differently, okay? That's why, for example, i got to teach you a totally different paradigm of health. Why? Because if you think the way you do, you'll still do the things you've done. You know what I'm saying? If you go to another doctor and another doctor and another doctor and they're all medical, will you get the same thing? Yes, you will. That's why second and third opinions kind of make me kind of, you know, giggle a little bit. Why? If you go to a surgeon and he says you need surgery, you're going to let another surgeon, he's, what he's going to say? You need surgery, go to the third surgery, you need surgery, okay? It's very common, you know what I'm saying? So I want you to think a little different about healthcare. Second of all is this, you have to understand the thyroid. You know what's really funny? Yesterday I had a new patient who was a 25-year-old woman that actually had massive uh, thyroid problems, massive female hormone problems, and I say, it's kind of funny, I'm a 38-year-old male teaching a 25-year-old woman about her, her hormones. What's wrong with that picture? You know what I'm saying? Because here's one thing, when I wanted to become, when I wanted to get my degrees in nutrition, when I wanted to become a chiropractor, when I wanted to become a naturopath, I had to study to figure what those were, right? And so that's what I'm saying. We're not teaching people about health. So I'm going to teach you how the thyroid works. I'm going to teach you the anatomy of it that way. Because once you understand it, now you know how to take care of it, okay? Then, here's the cool part. The tools and testing available, available out there, because there's a lot out there that you've never seen before. And then some of the good natural remedies and how to fix these female hormone problems, Okay? So that's what our whole basis is going to be for tonight. But the biggest one to think differently about the thyroid, you first have to do what? You first have to understand a different way of healthcare. So you ready? So here's what it is. So here's a new paradigm. So everybody do me a favor. Close your eyes for a second. I remember if you don't close your eyes, I won't go any farther. Good, good, good job. Now, I want you to picture that you're going home tonight, and all of a sudden, you're driving down your road, you're coming up to the block, and guess what? Open your eyes. And this is your house. With when you see that, let me ask you a question. Who are you going to call right away? 911. Who's going to show up? Let me ask you a question. Why didn't they send the dentist? Like, Doc, that's a stupid question, right? Well, it's a stupid question because why? That makes no sense. But wait, a dentist has a hose. Boy, you guys, you can interact a little bit. You guys, I know it's 6 p.m., but it's okay. So here's what happens. No, he guess what? The most appropriate professional to take care of the situation is who? The firefighters. Does anybody disagree with me? Well, let's walk through what they're going to do, okay? So first of all, the guy is, the, they're going to pull up in a big red fire truck, right? The first guy is going to jump out of the fire truck, and what is he going to have in his hand? 
an ax. What is he going to do to your door when he runs up to it? What is he going to do to your windows? Now, the second guy is going to come up with a hose, and he's going to run inside the house, and he's going to start spraying the hole inside your house. Now, let me ask you a question. When he sprays the wall on the walls, is it good for the walls? Is it good for the carpet? Is it good for the pictures of your kids? No, it's not. So the fire department has been there so far, let's say about 15 minutes, and what have they done to your house? And you stand there grateful. Do you notice that? They're causing so much destruction in that first 15 minutes, half an hour, and you're saying, good job. Okay, because why? That's what you call them to do. Because what was their whole purpose? To not to worry about a little bit of wall or a little bit of carpet. There was to do what? Stop the walls from burning down. Do you follow me on that? Now, let's say the fire department had did a wonderful job. They got there in time. They didn't make a mistake. They got to all the where the main fire came from, and they stopped your house from burning down. God bless. That's what they're there for, correct? But here's what happens. Here's your house that's left over. Now, guys, like I said, we're going to interact, so you can answer yes or no. Otherwise, I'll pick on you individually. Let me ask you a question. Can you move into the house that night? Is it toxic? Could you possibly hurt yourself? Absolutely. So here's a question for you. You're not going to leave the house like this. But the fire department's sitting there going, man, I'm done. I did a great job. I'm darn good at what I did. Okay? You're like, yeah, you're right, because you did what I called you to do. But can just the fire department handle that situation now? No. How stupid would they look if they tried to use their tools to rebuild that house? Can you rebuild a house with axe and hose? No. It's just like asking a dentist to put out the fire. Do you follow me? So who are you going to call that's going to be very different, that's going to think different, and going to look at it differently? Who is that? Carpenter. Now, let's say that the fire department is still there. He's still sitting in that house, okay? And all of a sudden, the carpenter walks in at the same exact time. Now, the fire department's thinking what? I'm damn good, aren't I? What does the fire department think? Holy freaking cow, what a mess. I got to rip this carpet, I got to rip this wall, and I got to bring in all this material to help you rebuild your house. Who's right? They both are, because why? They both have two distinct jobs, don't they? Guess what? He is needed at a certain time. He is needed at a certain time. But let me ask you a question. What happens if he showed up with the fire and tried to use his tools? What would happen to him? He'd probably die. Do you see what I'm saying? And this guy looks just as idiotic trying to rebuild that house. Do you follow me on that? Now, if you understand that example, you understand all of healthcare. You understand all of healthcare. Okay? Hey, what's your husband's name? Don. Let's pick on Don for a second, okay? <laughs> now, don't worry, I'm going to pick on everybody tonight, so don't feel left out. Okay, let's say Don right now, let's say he has a heart attack and stroke right now, okay? Now, I know he's like, oh, no, don't pick me. No, but here's one thing. Let's say he did. Let me ask you, with the education and background I have, or Dr. Zach and other people are here, would you want me to run into my kitchen there, grab a knife, and see if I can help Don? <laughs> no. <laughs> Why not, Don? Thank you. Okay, nor do I ever claim to be. So who should we call? Oh, so why? <laughs> you can kiss him though, not me. Okay. <laughs> okay, good, good. So who, who should we call? 9-1. Let's think of them like the fire department. So they're going to show up here with ambulance. They're going to run him to the hospital as quickly as possible. Okay? Now, does anybody disagree with me calling 9 No, no. Trust me, I want him out of here as quick as possible. Okay? <laughs> so here's what happens. So they're going to run him. They're going to use their big red truck, and they're going to bring him back to the hospital. And they're going to use their two tools they have available. What do they have available to the hospital, guys? Axe and a hose. Let me prove it to you. They're going to put that hose into his arm, and they're going to start pumping that medication into his body. Now, this is where you have to interact with me, okay? I want to see a yes or a no. I don't want to see any Stevie Wonders, okay? Yes or no. When they start pumping that drug into Don's body, is it good for his body? Look at something, guys. You can't answer, trust me, okay? Now, the one thing is this, but see where the confusion starts? See where it all starts? Because you don't even know what he's really used for. I'm going to say down the dock. Meaning what? Here, let me see a question. Let's go back to my example. If we actually start to spray water on the walls like the fire department or on the carpet or on the pictures of your kid, is it good for it? No. See, when you guys just said, um, yes, it's good for him, you're thinking it saved his life. I didn't ask that question. Do you follow me on that? See, this is where the confusion comes in. Because you, you, you'd be like, well, the doctor's really smart. I don't care how smart he is. I don't care how smart the fire department is. Do you see what I'm saying? Because why? Because his job is to do what? That medication is trying to actually do what? Put out the fire. But here's a question for you. On the back of every medication, what does it give you? A warning. Because why? Because there's damage. Who says so? They do. They do. Okay, I'm going to show you the warnings. Now, but here's a question for you. Let's say the medication didn't work. Now, they only have one tool left, guys. What do they have left? An axe. Surgery. Could Don possibly die from a surgery? 
But can you agree with me on this one major point so you don't un- misunderstand what I stand for? Let's say that somebody had a fire, heart disease, cancer, something like that, and your house is going to burn down. You're going to die. Would you guys agree with me that somebody na- may need surgery and drugs to stay alive? God bless. That's what they're there for. That's what we love them for. Do you follow me on that? We love them so you do not die. That's their purpose. Okay, but here's a question for you. Just like for me trying to take care of Don's situation in a heart attack or stroke, here's a question. The doctors are all standing around, and they're going, damn, I'm good at what I do. I saved his life. You know what I'm saying? But here's a question for you. When they're done with Don, they say, Don, you want something? You had a heart attack and stroke for this reason, and here is your body right now. Here's what we're going to do to help you rebuild your body back to normal so you never have these problems again. Does that happen? No. You know what they do? They stand outside your house all day and spray down your house. That's giving you a medication every single day. Now, what's the chance that you have another fire? Is it less? Yes, but what's going to happen to your house? It's going to rot. It's going to rot. And so what I do is I see rotten people all day long. Okay? Oh, I guess. Oh, wait. Change that one. <laughs> okay. I see people who are rotting inside all day long. Okay? Because why? Because, see, you've been taught this whole way. Well, let me prove it to you. You guys hear about heart disease, cancer, diabetes, stroke. In fact, do you see what I'm saying? They fire, 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 and you get scared about it. They even fear you into everything. They really do, okay? Well, I'm sitting there going, listen, God bless for the job that they have. But let me see the questions. How many drugs or surgeries, let's do this. How many medications does Don need to be healthy? It doesn't make any sense, does it? How many organs does he have to be, have removed? See, it doesn't make any sense, does it? So when you look at axes and hoses, drugs and surgery, they have a wonderful job of what they do here. But here's a question for you. Can that rebuild Don's house? No. So you have to ask a totally different professional. Do you follow me on that? So here's what happens. From the thyroid perspective, you've always gotten what? This. I'm going to teach you this. That's why you never hear about it. Because are we taught health, wellness, all things like that, or are we, tell, are we taught drugs and surgery, disease, sickness, illness? You know what I'm saying? So it's a totally different perspective. So that's why what I've been doing for so long, everybody's like, well, that's Dr. Flynn's opinion. No, it's not. It's just that I think differently than they do. Do you see what I'm saying? Heck, I remember naturopathic college. Naturopathic college, actually, they're even put in the natural realm kind of this way. Here, have you ever heard this? What, doc, what naturally did you give her for her thyroid? What did you naturally give her for her diabetes? Do you see what I'm saying? And our professor would say, say this. He'd say, give me your best natural remedy for diabetes. I'd be like, hold the phone. No, I won't do that. You know what I'm saying? Just think of natural path, natural treatment of pathology. Instead of using what? Medications, let's use something natural. And that's what this whole movement has come. Dr. Oz is doing it all day long, and I think it's wrong. Because why? Because you may take it, you may have a good reaction, but what about her and what about her? And then they say, well, that natural thing didn't work for me. Because it wasn't based on your biochemistry. And guess what? Do you know how, why drugs work? Because they will always work. Drugs always work. They always force the body to react. Can a natural substance force the body to react? No, it can't. So you see the confusion? So when they test and they look at the thyroid, they don't look at it from this standpoint. They look at it from here. So the guy actually, when I actually send blood work out and there are certain things we want, they're thinking what? This has nothing to do with what I do. Why would you want that? Does that make sense? I'm going to teach you all the blood work over here. And I'll show you why if they just look at this, guess what? You're going to miss it all. And they've been missing it forever. Here, I'll give you this. If you choose to use the medical doctor for your thyroid, you will never figure it out. Let me say it again, and I'm recorded, okay? So ha- bring this video to your endocrinologist, your medical doctor, anybody who was. They will never, you will never figure it out, okay? And it's not an arrogant statement. It's just like, why? Here, because I'm going to use their labs to show you how to figure it out. Fair enough, okay? Now, here's the big thing, and that's the big thing. I love, you guys know I love analogies. For some of you guys know me, for a while, I always like analogies and trying to create analogies. Why? Have you ever gone to a doctor before where you sit down and talk to him and you're discussing stuff and all of a sudden you leave and you have no freaking clue what you just talked about? Yeah, because they talk way over your head and you think they're smart and they're really you're confused like crazy and you know, no, no clue when they're walking out the door. So I like analogies so you can communicate better with people. Now, I'm going to show you a really good analogy how we're going to figure this out. Let me give you the example of how the thinking's wrong today, okay? Now, so I call this my CSI principle, my detective principle. You guys ever remember CSI? I'll tell you, I do like that TV show. If there's one I will watch, it'll be that one. But would you ever watch the TV show? It's about 50 minutes of what? Figuring things out, and then finally they show you criminal at the end. Okay? Well, here's the cool thing. That should be the same way with healthcare. But if I come in with the symptoms and symptoms, symptoms, you notice we all get the same things? Here, name me the two major drugs that are for the thyroid. Levothyroxine and synthroid. Do you follow me? They're common for everybody. Now, 
Here's what I want to show you. This is the mistake. I call this the disease specific, or let's call it the fire, okay? So here's what happens. Allopathic medical, okay? So let's say anybody here know anybody that has high blood pressure? Sure. You, you know, the sad part is this. It's very common. A lot of Americans suffer from it. And here, medically, when they actually have high blood pressure, you may put them on a diuretic, a channel blocker, a beta blocker. And here's a question for you. When they put you on this medication, does it work, yes or yes? Yes, it does. Drugs always work, okay? You say, well, doc, no, over time it didn't. No, because your body will adapt to it. So you have to take what? More or less? More, okay? But the drug does what it says it does, okay? So a lot of people say, doc, you know, medications have warnings and side effects. I don't want to do that. I want to go to an alternative approach. And they can do what? Use EFAs, coenzyme Q10, all these things. And can the blood pressure come down? Yes, it can. But this is the wrong mindset. This will never last. You say, doc, isn't this what you do? No. I'm trying to teach doctors all over the country this is the dumbest way to do it. Why? Because if you just treat the blood pressure naturally, what happens to the blood pressure over time? It gets what? Worse. And what will fail first, the natural thing or the medical thing? Say it. Natural will. It will always fail first. And so that's why people say, well, doc, I tried this and it, did, it worked initially, but it didn't work after that. Does that make sense? Because it's still the wrong mindset. You're always trying to treat a fire either medically or naturally. So you know what my little funny example is? It's like trying to treat the fire with chlorinated water compared to spring water. You know what I'm saying? Just trying to use a natural approach to it. It doesn't make sense. Because here's a question. If a person stops taking their blood pressure medication, what happens to their blood pressure? If people stop taking their natural thing, and guess what? What happens to their blood pressure? It goes up because there's still a problem. Okay? So I'm gonna call, I call this my roadmap to recovery, my wellness way approach. Okay, here's what happens. If a person has high blood pressure, they either have a kidney, an adrenal, a liver toxicity, or, or heavy metal poisoning. And if you remove that and repair that and fix that, what then now happens to your blood pressure? For how long? Ever. You know what I'm saying? That's the way you got to think about it. So when we look at the thyroid, we got to look at this whole way. But in order to understand the thyroid, you have to understand another analogy. And here's an analogy. Now, you guys ever seen a Swiss watch before? It's got a bunch of gears and a bunch of levers that all correlate together. But let me see a question. What happens even if one gear stops working? What happens? Yeah, it's going to affect it. It may stop completely. It may stop the second hand. It may stop the minute hand. But I want you to do is this. But when you look at the watch, would you ever just look at one gear? This is the way medicine looks at This is the way the fire department looks at Let me prove it to you. Okay? Do you know that doctors have, in, in medical, they have a lot of specialists? Did I ever tell you what my definition of specialist is? A specialist is a person that knows more and more about less and less. Do you see what I'm saying? What they do is they so focus on one gear, they forget that this gear does not spin and does not just be affected by itself. And all the research they do is based on one gear. Let me prove it to you, okay? So let's say, for example, you ever heard this back in the 80s? This is where it started in the 80s, that if you take what per day will make your heart beat better and longer? Aspirin a day. And they did that. Guess what? Scientifically, they looked at the one gear, the heart, and guess what? It's true. It's very true. It'll actually make the heart live longer. Okay, because why? The aspirin doesn't damage the heart. But here's what happens. What did they find out, though? What really happened? See, guess what? It does thin the blood, makes the heart beat easier, but also thins the blood vessels. And where's the smallest blood vessels in our body? So what was not even the top 10 killers in the 1980s or 70s? Stroke. And now in the last 30 years, it's been number four. Now think about that. Because why? Because they don't really care about that. They focus on the one gear. And when other things happen, they call them what? Side effects. Does that make sense? And guess what? That's not the way the body works. So when we look at the thyroid tonight, guess what happens? It's affected by all systems. Make sense? So when you actually learn to test the thyroid, you have to test all the systems. Imagine that. You're telling me that my digestive tract has actually a, a, a link to my thyroid? Yep. So you're telling me that if I eat a cheeseburger, that could affect my thyroid? Yep. Oh, that Culver's didn't sound so good anymore, does it? Okay. See, and that's one thing. So for example, and this is the biggest mistake, because they're so programmed in one gear and they're endocrinologists and all their specialists that they can't look at it globally because they, they're not taught to. Okay. The thinking is totally wrong with this whole paradigm. And so the sad part is this. We've got a whole bunch of people running around telling people, scaring people that this is what you focus on. Do you know how many people die from heart disease? Do you know how many people get cancer? Do you know how many people, do you see what I'm saying? And they per perpetuate everything by fear. That's why it's kind of funny. Do you ever notice going to a, the doctor is a scary thing? Let me say a question for people to come here. Is it scary to come here? Oh. 
Wow. Yes. Wow. And what I mean by this, because understanding health, believe it or not, is pretty exciting. It really is. It's pretty exciting to be vibrant 24-7. Do you see what I'm saying? You may drive some people nuts, and that's why I do a lot, but that's okay. You know? But it's nice to have energy from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed. You know I'm saying? It's nice to think clearly. It's nice to be able to do all those things. But look at all the things that happen today with even just this organ going bad. But this organ affects what? What does this organ affect? Everything. See, you can never just look at the thyroid because guess what? You're going to find out tonight, the liver has a major effect on the thyroid. So what happens if you get something toxic? Oops. Wait, wait. The adrenals have a major effect on the thyroid. So what happens if you stress out? Oops. See you know what I'm saying? And I'm going to show you medically how this has been all proven. Can anybody tell me, we're going to show you, but don't, don't say it. Can anybody tell me what one of the major contraindications for lever, levothyroxine or synthroid is? Watch, I'll show you. Okay? So here's what happens. Let's look at the stats out there. I hate stats, but this is just good for notes, okay? There's some things I'm going to skip over on here. I just put these in for your own notes, okay? So this is a big thing. A lot of women suffer from it, okay? Approximately 80% of all women known to, to suffer with some form of hypothyroidism. Think about that, okay? Now, that's a really important because, look it, thyroid disease is the most common endocrine disorder in the United States. The most common endocrine disorder. Wow, that's pretty bad. Because look what happens. You know, what is probably the most feared C word of all time? Cellulite. <laughs> see what I'm saying? Forget that cancer, just get rid of that cellulite. Okay? So see what happens is when you actually have that actual factor of, uh, of the thyroid getting bad, what's one of the major things, guys? Do you see what I'm saying? Here, it's not a joke. Uh, actually, if you just start to actually get your thyroid up, what happens to your fat tissue? It's going to start to metabolize. It is. Because why? It's one of its main jobs. So like I said, that's why it's quite huge. Fatigue, cold hands. See, and the funny thing is, I guarantee some of you guys are sitting here going, that's me. But I've had my thyroid tested and it's what? Normal. See, that's the confusion. Because they just, they even, you know, it's really funny. It's not a joke. I'm going to show you in just a second. The number one test they do doesn't even test your thyroid. It doesn't. I'll show you what it is. Now, so let's look at what it is. This is very important, okay? Because if you understand the gland, like I said, I'm always fascinated how, pe how women have no idea about their hormones. None. And like, guys, we're easy. Guess what? Testosterone, we're good. So you see what I'm saying? No, we have all the hormones like women do, but we have one that's really high, and that's testosterone. Women, you guys have a whole bunch of them. And if even one goes off, guess what? Ooh, it gets a little crazy in there. You know what I'm saying? And that's okay. I deal with that all day long, okay? And that's fun. Now, so let's kind of look at this. Now, this is just for your notes, okay? This is all the things the thyroid does. But here, even if you're a child, guess what? In children, it helps control body rate, growth, and brain development. Wait, wait, wait. Can a mother pass down a certain uh, thyroid disease to their kids? Yes, it can. I'm going to show that to you. Holy macro, it's going to blow your mind away, okay? Now, so there's so many factors that come in here. There's more. Here's the major roles of the thyroid. It's energy, breaks down proteins. It actually is, makes your hormones very sensitive, that's why, for example, if hormone levels are low, even if your body wants to metabolize fat, it can't, okay? Now, they regulate our full metabolism. That's the big thing. Heck, if all I taught you guys was how to make that metabolism come up, you guys would be happy because you have more energy. You'd lose weight. you do all the things that you want to do that way. Now, here's the cool. This is a little video. This is the thyroid. The thyroid is a gland in your neck, okay? Do you see how it kind of wraps around the, the, the esophagus, our throat? That's why if it swells, one of my questions is what? You feel like you got a lump in your throat, okay? But what it does is this. It releases certain hormones. Now, the great thing is, for example, it works by how? The brain, the little gland in the brain, puts off a little hormone. Does anybody know what the hormone's called? T-S-H. It's not even a, guess what? That's their main marker for all thyroid, T-S-H. You say, wait, doc, that's not even, that's not even a, a, a thyroid hormone. No, it's not. It's a what hormone? A pituitary hormone. See, so if you look, for example, TSH tells the thyroid how to work. They base all of medicine off for a 1973 value, and even six years ago has changed, and they still use the values from 1973. For you guys that follow me on Facebook, you remember me posting that? That's kind of sad, okay? But we're not even going to get to how their values are wrong. We're just going to show you. But here, so they start, the TSH tells the thyroid to produce some hormones. Now, when we see those hormones being produced, that's, guess what? I would even love it if some of the doctors would even measure those. A lot of times they don't even measure them. They say, listen, if the brain's telling the thyroid how to work, everything's cool. Don't believe me? Look at your test. You follow me? They, they base it all, because why? Levothyroxin and synthroid only affect one thing. What do they affect? T-S-H. So the test beyond that makes no difference to them. 
None. Because here, and you're going to see, no joke, I get letters from medical doctors even here in town that say, and you're going to love this one, that you're going to love this great one, say, listen, we can't do it because why? Because the insurance company will get mad at us and they're worried about getting what? No joke, guys. So they're so controlled by the insurance company that they won't even make a good choice for you because they're scared to get kicked on network. And I'm going to show you to you, I got it on paper. And this is not the first time ever sent to me that way. Worry about insurance reimbursement, about that insurance company going, that, that person that has no degree from the insurance company, from United or somebody calling up and saying, listen, you can't do that. We're going to kick you out. That's how our system works. And we, they think, I'm crazy? Do you see what I'm saying? This is the health care. Now, it gets better. So <laughs> I'm still a guy. Why does the petunia have to look like that? <laughs> you know, it's like every time you put that up, it's like, oh, okay. I know you're sick. <laughs> but here's what happens. Yes, our pituitary tells our little gland, our little thyroid gland. Now, those little thyroid glands are made up of little things called thyrocytes. Who cares? Okay? But I want to show you what they look like, and there's a reason why. Well, what happens is this. This is what it looks like, a real cell. And they have little receptors on the outside where the TSH comes and tells it to release hormone. Now, there's a neat trivia question, okay? But I'm going to get to that in a second. So here's what happens. Those thyrocytes actually produce hormones. Now, can anybody tell me what hormones actually your thyroid produces? Can anybody tell me? Mary? T3 and T4. You're half right. T1 and T2. You just learned that. You didn't count. What else? Now here, it's kind of funny. Think of it this way. T3, T4, which they never even really started measuring until years ago. I've been screaming about it for a freaking year, long time. Get these measured, and they never did. Now they're finally measuring because people are starting to get smart and read about it. But do you know that it also produces T2 and T1? I'm not covering those tonight because that's a whole different realm right there. Let's just start off basic, T3 and T4. But there is one very important hormone that has to be measured every single time because it makes a significant amount of it, and it's called reverse T3. Ever heard that before? Reverse T3. Now, what I will show you is this. So this is what your hormone looks like. T4, T3, reverse T3. If you look, 90, 77, and 1. One time at a seminar when I didn't talk about T2 and T1, a person came up and said, Doc, Doc, you're really bad at math. I'm like, why? He goes, you only have 98% of the hormone up there. <laughs> well, guess why? Because T2 and T1 are the other percentage. You follow me on there? So just so you guys see that, it's if we're not going to cover that tonight because trust me, it's a very, very in-depth process. But what I want you to understand is some of the major hormones. So if you just look at the major things they produce right away, you have T4, you have T3, and you have reverse T3. Does anybody know what the difference is? Now, for some of you guys that have never heard me speak before, I like to interact. And what I mean by that is this. I want you, when you walk out here, to learn a ton. So I'm, when I actually ask questions and engage with you, I'm not trying to act like you don't know anything. I just want us to, what? When we walk out, what's the difference between you and I? I just went to school and I, and I never stopped reading. Do you see what I'm saying? That's it. I'm just a learner person. I'm trying to teach you. So if we can teach you to be learner people, who now controls their health, me or you? Do you see what I'm saying? I want you guys to control this. So if you understand what we're doing, that's why I ask questions, okay? So does anybody know what T3 and T4 mainly do? There are metabolic hormones, but T4 is inactive. But wait, it's 90% of our hormone produced by our thyroid. T3 is your active form. Do you follow me on that? That's what gives your energy, your metabolism, everything like that. You say, then, then why is it produced in the thyroid? It's produced and it goes to other organs and it's converted to active T3. Does that, do you follow me on that? Here, let's do this. So the majority of your hormone produced by your thyroid is T4, but then it goes to other organs and converts to our active form T3. So it's converted. Do you follow me? And T3 is the active form. This is what gives us all of our metabolism, all of our energy, all the things that we do. So if you, that's why, for example, T3 is more important than T4. Because why? Because you can have abundant T4, and that's a big mistake. Doc, why do I have a problem losing weight? Why do I have no energy when I have normal TSH and normal T4? Because T4 is what? Inactive. So remember that. That means what? That means on this little cell right here, when this thing comes and touches on to another cell, guess what happens? It doesn't activate the gland to be metabolic. It doesn't. It's actually just a carrier hormone. It has to be converted to this, to T3. Well, you say, well, Doc, well then, well, then why is it, uh, um, what's reverse T3? Well, here's what happens. If there's too much T3 produced, guess what happens? You go into what? Hypo or hyperthyroid. So the body always balances itself out. It actually creates a hormone to actually make sure that the thyroid doesn't be too active on the body. Because does anybody know what one of the things that if thyroid gets too high, what it can do? Makes your aorta do what? 
Can anybody tell me the side effects of Cytomel? The T3 drug? The one that actually has to be sometimes put in the hospital and given that way? It actually will blow the aorta out. You know how they figured it out? After they blew a bunch of people's aortas out. It's not a joke. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, remember Celebrex when it came out? Killed a bunch of people, what'd they do? Take it off the market, change it, what'd they do? Put it back on the market in a different form. Okay? So when you look at this, your body actually produces a hormone to kind of balance it out. But here's the bad part. What happens if this hormone now becomes a very active hormone, meaning that? I mean, the fact that this becomes 7% and this becomes 1%. So you could even have normal levels of T4, normal levels of T3, and then reverse T3 went really high. Does anybody know how that happens? It's called stress. It's called stress. It's called mental stress. Now, actually, we produce a hormone. I'm going to show you this. Don't worry. I'm going to give you a general overview. I'm going to show you all this in detail. Like I said, this is one of the more detailed seminars I ever taught, but I want you to understand that, listen, that as this starts to increase, it will start to make all of this inactive. And I'm going to show you how. Now, here's one thing. Good trivia question for you. What do you think is the only gland that actually stores its own hormone? What, what gland is it, guys? Thyroid. Thyroid. There you go. Now, think about that. That means for even your hormones to actually be low, you have to have them low for over 100 days. That means you have to stop producing a hormone a significant amount for almost three months before your levels will even show low. That's pretty crazy, isn't it? That means when you actually finally have a thyroid problem, did it just happen overnight? No, it's been going on for a long time, and now the hormones actually show that, guess what, this is the problem. So if we just do this, if we just look at these three hormones right here, just the things that we did. So we know what, what TSH does. It's the pituitary hormone telling the thyroid to work, TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. We know that T4, for example, is the main one produced, but it's unactive. So you can have plenty of T4 to actually in your body, it doesn't mean you're gonna have active hormone. T3 is what we want, but if there's a too much and too much reverse T3, it's now inactivated. So here's one thing, guys, think about this. So the normal testing they do is what? Incomplete. You see what I'm saying? So if you look at that, sli that first slide I had, where the person had TSH, and they even measured T3 and T4, and they told her she was what? Normal. I'm gonna show you what her tests look like later. I'm gonna show you why she wasn't normal. Do you get the concept why I said the untold story? Because with their thinking, this is what you'll get. You're lucky you get that tested. Most of the time, they just test this. But let's say they were good enough to test those. It's still incomplete. If you didn't even test reverse T3, you, don't, you didn't even actually fully test you. Okay? And that's just on the other hormones. Now, I said, you really want to throw your doctor off, ask about T2 and T1. You'd really confuse them. Now, I'm not being mean about this. I'm not telling them that they're not smart. It's just that with the paradigm and what they have for tools, this is all they measure. Does that make sense? So if you depend on them, you will live and die by them. You will be on that medication and will be altered and it will cause destruction for how long? The rest of your life. The only thing I have a problem with, here's where I have the biggest problem. This is my personal thing, is if the fire department showed up at the, at the house when there was no fire, how dumb would they look? Just as dumb as the carpenter showing up. You know how idiotic I think they are when they say, listen, this is the only thing you can do. You think they say that to people? Every day. Do you follow me on that? That's wrong. That is wrong. Stop lying to people, and that's what it is. It's a blatant lie. Because why? Just because they think one way, they think they're the what? Only way. Now, let me step back. Am I against drugs or surgery, Don? No. They have their purpose. But guys, if you let them teach you that this is all they, that can be done, they're wrong. Okay? And that's a blatant lie. So if you look at reverse T3, so here's what happens. Because I got, I got to throw this out there. Oh, it, that's Dr. Flynn's thing. You know what I'm saying? I've had people, now our lab, LabCorp is the largest lab in the world, okay? Purveya and everybody else, guess where they send their labs to be done? LabCorp, do you see what I'm saying? So I love how they always say, well, that's Dr. Flynn's lab. That's his testing. <laughs> I'm like, I don't create this stuff. I just put it in clinical practice and make it available for people to understand. So now, by definition, reverse T3. Unlike T3 does not stimulate the thyroid hormone receptors. So if you have high T, reverse T3, and it goes on to an organ, it can't activate it because T3 is now already taken up on a receptor. Do you follow me on that? So that's why it's so important to be measured. Now, here's the key though. Under chronic what? What's this right here? Stress, conditions, the adrenal glands produce excess amounts of cortisol. Cortisol inhibits reverse T3, inhibits T3 or T3 and causes reverse T3 to be increased. So adrenals are known as what gland? What gland? Stress gland. 
Now here's a question for you guys. By nature, okay, by nature, by statistics, who's more sick, men or women? Women. By nature, guys and girls, who, sw- who stresses out more, men or women? Women. Who causes women the most stress? Yeah. Men, there you go. <laughs> so, but here's the cool part. Is so let's look at what stress is. Let's define it medically. Now here's what happens. We, here's really funny. We all study from the same books. When I went to my nutrition degrees, my, my uh, uh, chiropractic degree, my naturopathic degree, guess what? We all study from the same books. We really do. They take a different approach. They think differently, okay? Now, let's, let's, let's actually define stress, what it's actually defined as. Stress is a physical. So let me see a question, guys. If I smash my finger, is that a physical stress? If I have damage to my spine, is that a stressor? Now you know why I'm a chiropractor. See what I'm saying? So you say, well, I don't get adjusted. Then you'll be sick. You will. Well, I don't have pain. I don't care. See what I'm saying? Does anybody know in the American Heart Association what the number one symptom of heart disease is for an all, and 70% of the males? Death. For 70%. People get the pain down your arm are lucky people. That's when you go to their funeral and say, Charlie never had a sick day of his life. And what did he do? He dropped out of a heart attack. You know, he wasn't, he wasn't, not, he wasn't healthy. He was dying inside. Now, so here, stress is a physical, a psychological stimulus that can produce mental or physiological reactions that may lead to what, guys? Illness. Whoa. So you have a biochemical change that your starts here or smash your finger starts there. Hey, is a bacteria a, a physical stressor? Yes, it is. Okay. It gets better. Technically speaking, stress is a disruption of balance, balance of hormones, which may trigger, be triggered by alarming experiences, either real or ladies what? Ah, <laughs> oh, you wonder why women stress out so much. 80% of the stuff you worry about what? Never happens. And see, I always tell people, say, listen, don't try not to stress out because what it will do to your thyroid function is what? You ever notice that? It'll drive it down. Now, the funny part is this. We have a tool, and you can Google this, called heart math. We can tell if your body is in the fight or flight stress response. We even have a tool now. It's, they have a phone app with it where you hook yourself up diagnostically. Not a joke. And you can walk around. The minute your body gets into fight or flight, it kicks in. You see what I'm saying? It tells you if you're under stress. Now, let me see a question. How many of you guys have had your stress hormones measured? Oops. Now, why do you say? How, measured what? Well, here, let's understand hormones and let's understand stress hormones overall in general really quickly because this relates to female hormones or it also relates to stress hormones. Now, here, this is a whole nother class and this is going to be next month. Let me ask you a question. What are all hormones made from in the body? What are all hormones made from? Watch this. Cholesterol. Oh, wait, doc, that's bad for you. Yeah, who said that? The fire department. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? And then they're wrong. You can't make a hormone without cholesterol. And here, here is both the male and the female hormones. Guys, you can't make testosterone without cholesterol. You know why I pick on the guys on this? Because if you're taking a statin drug, cholesterol levels go down. Testosterone levels go down. What else stays down? <laughs> Do you follow me? See, I, I've, been, I've never, ever, in all my years of practice, I've ever dealt with a case of impotence where the, where the guy wasn't taking some form of statin. And they lie to people saying, cholesterol causes heart disease. No, it doesn't. And so once again, it's just like the 1973 value they have for the thyroid. It's the biggest myth on the planet. It's still the biggest hoax. And don't wrong, next month, don't miss that seminar. Okay? You say, because you say, well, well, that's a guy. No, ladies, guess what? Your fat-free diets have made you extremely sick. Because without healthy fats, you could not make good hormones. Now, let me show you this. So this is actually basic hormones. This is your stress hormones. They're all made from what? Remember that 25-year-old lady that I had yesterday that was having female hormone problems? Her cholesterol is at 169. Do you know how pitiful old that was? She can't make a hormone to save her life. She has more hormones like a guy. You know what I'm saying? And see, the sad part is this. Our stress hormone is called what, guys, down on the bottom? Cortisol. That's our big stress hormone. But here's what happens. It comes from cholesterol. But well, ladies, let me ask you another question. What other, where does cholesterol come from also? What's that hormone right there? Progesterone. Whoa, 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 whoa. So let's look at this from the Swiss watch principle. Yeah, ladies, have you ever stressed out so much that you're delayed or skipped your period? There's your connection. You know what I'm saying? But if you don't think like we do multiple system watches, years, you could never figure that out. Oh, I don't know why I skipped my cycle. You're a little stressed out physically, mentally, emotionally. Do you see what I'm saying? And see, so what happens, these stress hormones come about, and we can measure them. Now, what's my, what's my law of the land of the wellness ways all over the country? What's my law? We don't guess. What do we do? 
That's how when I can look at two beautiful ladies, go, listen, I don't care if you're twins. You are going to not have the same stressors. So therefore, you're going to be affected differently hormonally and everything like that, okay? So then we don't guess, we test. So here's a simple adrenal test, the cortisol test. It's very elevated in the morning and very low at night. Now, ladies, let me ask you a question. And be honest with me. If you're, how many of you guys actually are night people? You're not supposed to be. You're supposed to be jumping out of bed in the morning and shutting down at night. Who says so? Your hormones. See you know what I'm saying? And hormones are messengers and they control us. Do you see know what I'm saying? But the idea is this. People say, oh, doc, I can't get out of bed. But boy, I get my second wind at night. I'm like, good, you're going to be sick. Do you know what I'm saying? Because now that whole hormonal rhythm now is abnormal. Ladies, how can you actually have a normal daily rhythm if you can, or a normal monthly rhythm if you can't have a... Okay. Check. Uh, retake. Okay. How can you have a normal monthly cycle if you can't do a normal daily cycle? And guys, you're not off the hook. You guys cycle daily too. You're kind of moody too, so don't worry about it. Okay? <laughs> ladies are like, yeah, hey, you're right. Okay? Well, if he's taking a statin drug, he doesn't have an excuse. Okay? Now, so these are all measurable, but here's what happens. When you first do this, when all of a sudden, when stress levels come to you, do cortisol levels go high or low? They go high. So all of a sudden, when you measure these, they become very elevated, and we call that what? Chronic stress. But over time, this is like a fuel tank, and every organ will start to fatigue, and you'll end up with what? Chronic fatigue <clears throat> syndrome. You see what I'm saying? It's one of the second highest diagnosis in America. Because why? Because you're so hormonally stressed out. So here's a patient of ours. Look what happens. Here's your, here's your graph, low in the morning, elevated at night. You know what I'm saying? The kind of reversing whole aspect. Look at this one. Here's that chart again. Barely, look at this woman. She could barely get out of bed. You know, because why? Cortisol is an adrenal hormone. Adrenals do what for us? They elevate us. They get us to stand up. Why do you think that humans have larger adrenals than every other species on the planet? Because most of them are what? Quadrupeds. We have to get upright. Does any, any, you ever heard of a woman, or even guys, let's, let's focus on women a little bit. You ever heard of a woman having a hard time getting up in the morning and getting going? Because why? Because look at, and it's measurable through the day. Okay? And that's one thing that's very key because if these are abnormally low, they're not going to be able to get their butt going. Here's another one. Look at this woman actually, actually had normal, she got up pretty well, but what then happened by lunchtime? She got lunch coma after she ate and she could never recover because her hormone levels couldn't deal with it. Do you follow me on that? Because why? It just shuts down. Now, why is this significant? Because here's the adrenal glands. They contribute. Now, think of this, ladies. This is very important. For your, now, remember, can I talk about the thyroid not talk about female hormones? No, they're interrelated. They always are. Now, let me show you something. The adrenal glands contribute to about 35% of all of your female hormones. Now, think about that. That's why when you go through menopause, your ovaries and uterus, uterus shut down, and what organs left to have you, give you some hormones? Your adrenals. What if they're weak when you go through menopause? Think menopause would be enjoyable for you? If I say to you, ladies, that you're going to go through menopause, are you all excited? It's, it's been so bad hormonally the way the fire department has taught us that we treat it like a disease. Now, let me ask you a question. What woman on the planet is going to go through menopause? Every one of them. See, but we treat it like it's what? A condition. It's not. It's an imbalance, but if it's done right, you'll be just fine. Here, here's the cool part. Furthermore, without proper functioning adrenal glands, you can't get what? Pregnant. Pregnant. I have, a, I, have a, I have a mom here where their daughter tried to get pregnant for how many years? Nine. Nine years. And so what happens is, it's kind of funny. Casey, my video guy, him, he's in back right now. Casey, I'm talking about you. Um, he's in back there right now. It's kind of funny. And then what happened is she didn't have female hormone problems. She had adrenal problems. And now guess what happened? They had three babies in four years. And Casey says, how can we shut it off now? <laughs> I'm like, stress her out. But here, but here's the big thing. It's also a major control mechanism of what? Thyroid. Remember I asked you at the beginning, what is one of the major contraindications for levothyroxine or synthroid? What is it? Adrenal insufficiency. Who says? You ever heard of PDR? Physician death reference? We all have to have them. We have no interactions with drugs. We have to know this. And let's read this. It says, for example, who should not take Synthroid if your adrenal glands are not making enough hormone? It's a contraindication. Let me show you another one. Levothyroxin. Contraindications. Uncorrected what, guys? So here's one thing. If you're on Levothyroxine and Synthroid, you should walk up to your doc and say, Doc, should I have my adrenals tested? What is he going to do? 
he's going to have no freaking clue what you're talking about. None. None. Because he's not taught how to do it. So what does he do? Well, no. Well, then, Doc, but wait. Your medication says you contraindication is low adrenals. What does contraindication mean? You're not supposed to have it if you don't get that tested, if you're low. Does that make sense? Now, it gets better. It says, what are some warning and precautions? If the patient has adrenal sufficiency, it should be treated with corticosteroids before. Corticosteroids, cortisol, has to bring it up before you do it. Why? Because the adrenal and thyroid are controlled together. Remember, go back to my Swiss watch. That's why they will never get it. You follow me on that? They will never get it with their thinking. And it's never going to change. Do you know why? Do you really think they want it to change? Man, they're rich, man. Low economy, they're not low. You know what I'm saying? Not at all. They're making billions and billions. What was last year? $12 trillion was spent. 2.7 was on healthcare. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that's the sad part. And so what I want you guys to understand is this. Save your questions, Anne-Marie, okay? So when you look at the contraindications that way, you've got to be very careful when you test that, okay? Now, you can test that several ways. You can also test it by blood too, okay? Now, I love this. So let's review a little bit. Let's review on this, okay? It's, okay, what time is it? It's after seven? Oh, good. My three hours left. All right. Okay. No, just going to take a break in about five minutes, and then we're going gonna, gonna, gonna to actually finish the second part of it. Now, let's kind of review it. So we know that the brain, a.k.a. the pituitary, tells the thyroid how to work. We know that. It produces T4. But T4 converts to T3. Now, it happens in many organs. We're going to go through that in a little bit. But one of the major places it happens is the liver. About most of it's converted in the liver. So if a person has a toxic diet, can that affect their thyroid function? Yes, it can. Well, also, too, we need this little mineral called selenium. Can anybody tell me where we get a lot of selenium from? You get it from meats, but what else? Nuts, seeds, you follow me? And so here's a question for you. So anybody that has a thyroid problem, do they ever find out if you're selenium deficient? Oops. You see what I'm saying? What does the plant, what? What does the plant need? See, we always go back to that. We've got to find out what the plant needs. Now, it gets better. So here's a young lady that came for me. She's actually from, I think, Kentucky. And um, so it's kind of funny. So her doctor said, your thyroid's normal, thyroid's normal, thyroid's normal. And even tested her T4, okay? And they said what? Her T4 was what? It was normal. But they didn't test what? T3. T3 was what? Abnormal. Okay? So they tested her non-active hormone, and they never tested her active hormone. And so what they found out, she goes, oh, my goodness. Now, I'll just to let you know, just to let you know, this woman actually had a toxic liver. You follow me? And as you start to detox her, what happened to her, her blood work? See, I love, we don't guess, we test. But you know what I love more than testing? Retesting. I love it. You know why? I love when you come and say, Doc, I'm doing awesome. You know what I say? I don't care. You know why? Because I don't care how you feel. I really don't. You know what I'm saying? Because I give you a little bit of gasoline to drink, are you going to feel good? No, you're going to puke, you're going to throw up, get diarrhea, get a fever, but is that bad or good? It's fantastically good. Yeah, you're getting the crap out. You know what I'm saying? Or we could just do this. We can give you some anti-nausea medication, keep it in, keep toxins in. Now, we, we laugh about that, but what happens when we give people chemotherapy, which is much less potent than gasoline is, and we give them anti-what? Thank you. Let's keep the junk in. It's good for you, okay? So what happens is very simple as this, is this woman had a certain problem, and we figured out what her ne exact needs were because here's what happens. Things that can, so even if you do have sufficient selenium, what can stop the conversion from T4 to T3 is what? Our hormones, our stress hormones, or heavy metals, or there's one other thing, and this is what women suffer massively with if they have a bad menstrual cycle. Low ferritin, which is what? Low iron. Now, so if you're going to get a thyroid test, ladies, and as long as you're menstruating, you think it'd be important to test ferritin? Yes. If it's low, you can't convert that hormone. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Ferritin. Well, ferritin has nothing to do with thyroid, really? Honestly? Has nothing to do with producing it here, but to make it active and available, you need to have that. Now you say, Doc, you said heavy metals. Yep. Guess what? Anybody here have a metal filling? Anybody here ever had a vaccine? Oops. I'm going to show you a, a nurse from Purveya that came in that actually her daughter actually had a vaccine reaction and shut her thyroid down. As we detox out there, I'm going to show you her lab. And it's kind of funny. I'll show you this case, but it's kind of cool. Her name is Christina. And her daughters, for example, is, uh, they told her, now she's a, she's a nurse for them. And she said her daughter was going through all these problems, bad thyroid problems, and they did normal TSH. And what they find, it was what? Normal. And they said, take her home and be nice to her. You can call Christine if you want. She was going to try to make it for us tonight to give her testimony on that. 
Now, but that's what happened to these people, okay? So here, now this is how we're going to end on, okay, just, for, just before our little five-minute break here. Now, heavy metals, but also two, for example, now why do, I have a, why do I have a periodic table up here? Don't be on it. It's not that boring, <laughs> okay? No, see, a periodic table, because why? Because where, what, what is T3 and T4 made of? Any guess? T stands for tyrosine. D, D3 and 4 are what? Uh, uh, iodines. See what I'm saying? So if you're iodine deficient, can you actually produce thyroid hormone? No, that's why iodine is so important, okay? Now, the one thing is this. If you don't have enough iodine in your diet, or if you don't take it because you don't have it in your diet, the body says, listen, I have to use something. So if we use the periodic table, guess what happens? Iodine is called a halogen. It's, iodine is the same structure as fluoride, chloride, and bromide. Uh-oh. Wait, 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 wait. So you're telling me then, if I'm iodine deficient, the receptors for my thyroid can be plugged up with chlorine, fluorine, or bromide? So if you bathe in chlorinated water, can that affect your thyroid function? Oops. You wonder why I'm against it? You wonder why, I, no joke, I just got a, I, on Facebook, I'll, I'll, I'll copy it for you guys that way. I just actually was asked to testify against fluoride use in the water, okay? What about chlorine, or chlorine, chlorine and fluoride? Those are, do you understand those are both drugs? We get mass drugs, you don't even know about it. You do it under not your own will. If you take a shower and get chlorine, you know what I'm saying? Does anybody know where bromide came in from, bromine? And thank you. It's actually made to do what? Sterilize bread, to keep it from rotting. Do you know in 1981, this was 81, some ridiculous scientists, because what do we, oh, what did we use to preserve bread before bromide? Iodine. So then some ridiculous scientist said, whoa, we have so much bro iodine we're getting in contact with, we want to put another halogen in there. And then we became bromine toxic. Let me see a question. Have any of you guys here ever had your iodine tested or, for example, your bromine chlorine or, tox or, or fluorine toxicity? Do you get my point? You don't count, okay? <laughs> Do you get my point on that? See, so we've missed this whole boat. Now, am I saying that everybody's chlorine toxic? No, but that's the whole idea where you have to figure out each individual person. Does that make sense? Okay, because a lot of you guys go, well, I want to test. I don't know if that's you. That's our job to figure out, okay? Now, it's quite significant because guess what? So when they do certain research, they find out that all the halogens actually replace iodine. And that's why I love research. There's my copy. And I got hundreds of it. See, what's my, what's my thing? People say, well, Doc, where did you read that? Can I have a copy? Don't let them give you opinions. I want you to actually base everything on research. Chlorine, for example, is it really, you know, people don't realize Chlorine is actually very poisonous. Can anybody tell me what food substance destroys the thyroid the most because of chlorine? It's made from real sugar. That's their advertising. Splenda. Splenda is actually sugar cut off the hydrogens and put chlorine to it. Splenda destroys your thyroid. It's known to destroy your thyroid. That's why I've even caused thyroid cancers. Do you remember that when we were kids? Now, some of you guys are younger than me. <laughs> but remember kids? The pink, blue, and yellow package you say caused what in lab rats? And they took that off because they, it was good, they just want to take it off or they lobbied to get that off. Do you see what I'm saying? See, they don't care about your health. They care about their sales and their products that way. But that stuff is destroying. It's really funny. You go to the hospital and what do they give a diabetic? You know what I'm saying? Splendid to eat there. And they don't realize that that's destroying your thyroid. Now, to recap before our break, this is what thyroid function really looks like. So the brain tells the, the thyroid how to work. It goes to multiple organs in the body. It's converted. It's converted to its active form. So if you don't even understand how the thyroid works or what affects the thyroid, you can never figure it out. Now, out of all those things I taught you so far, what do you think is the main contributor to thyroid problems? That's only about 20% of it. The main thing that causes 80% of our, our, uh, our, uh, our thyroid problems I'm going to teach you after a five-minute break.